Hi, this is Jeff from Sploder.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make an invader style game using the new physics puzzle maker. Uh, inv invader style game is a game where you have uh, a player that uh, moves across the screen at the bottom and you have aliens coming down from the top, uh, much like Space Invaders or Galaga or games like that. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, create a player down at the bottom of the screen uh, and I'm going to do all these things very simply and quickly, um, not be uh, too um, careful about the graphics themselves, uh, just so that we can get started for, and, and I can show you this quickly. So, uh, first I'm just going to create a square, and this will be our uh, player. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to move him back and forth. And that's really easy to do using the creator. We just go to the controls and drag a slider on top of the object. And then if we do a quick test, you can see he drops to the bottom of the screen and we can move him back and forth. Now in this case I don't want him to slide uh, on the bottom of the screen. I want him to actually be in a, in, in a uh, floating around. So I'm going to have him, uh, but I'm going to constrain his movement to, to just back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the physics panel and I'm going to choose groove. And I can just drag this groove and this is a groove joint that I can uh, apply to this object and he'll be constrained to this groove. So if I click test, now I can move him back and forth, but only within the constraints of the groove. And let me uh, adjust the background color so you can actually see that the groove is actually drawn there. And you can see it now if we go back and forth. Maybe partially obscured by my keyboard presses, but you can see that groove there. And what we can do is we can move the ends of the groove so that he can move farther back and forth. And I like to try to keep it centered, so the center of this joint is still in the center of the of the uh, player. And I can sort of scoot the player around and make sure that it is also centered. And we'll click test. And that's good enough for now. Okay. So the next thing we need to be able to do with this player is be able to uh, is for him to be able to shoot uh, upwards. So what we need to do is we need to create a projectile. And I'm just going to simply make uh, circle, uh, circle and uh, put it right above the player. Now if we just test, it's going to be a regular circle and nothing's going to happen. And we can see that when he runs into that circle, he sort of turns around. So what we need to do is two things. We need to finish that projectile, but also let me... Doing, I'm going to constrain the movement of the player to slide only so that it doesn't rotate, because we don't want the, the projectile to be shooting in different directions. We want just to, to shoot straight up. So, next thing I need to do is make it so that this projectile follows the player around when it moves back and forth. So, I'm going to add this new object, uh, another uh, modifier, uh, connect. Gonna, when you do the connect, you need to click on the parent object and then also click on the child object using the shift key. So you have two objects selected and then you drag the connector onto the parent object. And if you click test, now the projectile follows the player around. Okay. Now, next thing I need to do is actually make that projectile so it can shoot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the projectile and I'm going to add another widget. Uh, actually, this is under controls and I'm going to use the adder. And I've dragged an adder onto here. Now if we do a quick test, when I hit the space bar, I can add projectiles. Now they're not prohibiting like uh, real projectiles would. So what I need to do is I need to stretch out the length of the arrow for the projectile, uh, for the adder. And all I need to do is make that longer. The longer you make it, the, the uh, stronger the force is when it is created. And then the direction of the arrow controls the direction that it is launched. So if I click test, now if I hit space bar, it goes pretty far, but I don't want it to bounce back down. I'm going to click on play field. And we have a little bit of lag here because I'm recording, but if I choose on the play field uh, boundaries, open, then uh, the projectile will not uh, hit the top of the screen. It'll just go past. So I'm going to do that. Now if I click test, it just goes straight up. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this material, on this uh, projectile, and I'm going to change its material to um, air. And these, this is a, a what I call a magic material with layer, uh, very low friction and no gravity effect. So uh, it won't be affected by gravity, it won't be drawn back down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lifespan of the, uh, of the objects created by the adder. I don't need them to survive for 10 seconds, I them to survive for only one second, because by the time one second has passed, they're off the screen. So now I have a pretty good projectile. So that's basically my player um, for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a bad guy. And I'm just going to quickly, because we don't want him floating, we want him to come down towards the player. And I'm going to change its look and feel just a little bit here so that we can tell what we have. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into an object that is created during the game automatically. And the way I do that is I choose under widgets, I choose uh, objects are created automatically at an interval and except, instead of, at a, uh, instead of um, in response to keyboard input. So, same thing, arrow, I move it in the direction I want the, the, the uh, object to move, and then I'll just, I'm going to change some of these settings. I'm going to say I'm going to want to make one every three seconds instead of every one second. And I can limit the number of spawns, but I'm not going to do that for now. And I'm going to say I want it to live for 20 seconds. Now if I click test, now every three seconds a new enemy is created. Now it doesn't really, uh, it's not very realistic as far as a game where you have enemies coming down towards you. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a path for this enemy to go on. And the way I do that is, I just cr simply create some uh, rectangles, path, rectang rectangular objects that will create a path, a corridor for him to move along. I do need some sidewalls because I turned off the boundaries for the game. So I'm going to add a couple of sidewalls here. Oops. And and I'm going to, in order for this character, this uh, bad guy to move around, I need to create um, create something to, to move him around. He's he's going to be in a going an emotional uh, an emotion path when it starts, but it'll eventually slow down. So what I need to do is I need to add something that'll keep him moving down the path. And what I can do here is basically uh, look under physics, and if I add a bouncer. Now the trick here is with the bouncer, it'll actually create a, make him bounce and go up and down. But if you change the direction of the bouncer, you can actually turn it, turn your object into a conveyor belt. And as long as he's moving along the side, he'll be conveyed along and he won't stop. And I added that because uh, right now because I want to be able to copy it and not have to keep adding it. So now I'm going to reverse the direction. Next thing I need to do is uh, something I forgot to do, which is for all these objects, I need to create uh, constrain their motion to static. I don't want them to fall down to the bottom of the screen. So I constrain them to static motion here, and if I do a test, now we can see that this guy is moving down and bouncing around, and he continues to move. Now what I'm going to do is instead of having him bounce like that and flip around, I'm going to also constrain his motion to slide only, and he won't flip around, rotate around, he'll just bounce down. Now I can create some more quarters just by shift and drag, shift, click, and drag, and now I've got a path for him to go on. Let's go a quick test. Great. Perfect. Next thing we need to do is we need to shoot at the guy, and we don't want our uh, projectile to bounce on these objects. So I'm going to select on these objects, and I'm going to set up their collision layers to only uh, be on zero. So anything that's on collision layer zero will collide with these and since the bad guy is on collision layer zero he will. But I'm going to 
set up this projectile so that it is layer zero. So now when I test the game, you see that the projectiles are hitting the bad guys with end, but they are going right through the path. And that's what we want. Okay, now, truly what we really need to do is to make this look like a typical game, we need to get rid of these paths uh, visually. So what we need to do is go into the uh, paint mode and turn off the fill and the stroke. And now we have, we can still see them in the preview, but if we test the game, now we have the bad guy moving back and forth as if he was flying. It looks like he's flying, but he's actually following this path that we've created. He's bouncing off the edges and moving down. So that's basically how you create uh, a Space Invaders uh, game with the physics. Next thing you need to do, need to do is add the, the logic so that uh, things happen in the game. And what we're going to do is click on uh, this bad guy here. Actually, uh, we're going to click on our projectile first. And we're going to set up a sensor layer for the projectile. And I'm going to set up for the heart layer, which uh, we're going to have. When a sensor event happens, when two heart layer objects collide, we're going to want to have uh, scoring happen. And we also want that object to be removed. And uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put projectiles on pass through layer A so that they don't collide with each other and give you points. Next, I'm going to do what the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, the uh, bad guy also on sensor layer heart so that when I Oops. When I test the game, I should get points when I hit the player. There we go. And now we're getting multiple points for the player, even though we're hitting him, we've hit him already, because he's not actually being removed from the game. So what I need to do for the next thing is I need to add an event for the sensor event for the bad guy, which will remove him from the game when a sensor event happens. So now when you shoot the bad guys, they go away. And that's what we want. And next thing we want to do is we want to add a little challenge to the game. We want it to have so that when uh, the bad guy hits the player, we want to have uh, we want to have that we want to have a penalty happen. So what we're going to do is set up another sensor layer, and on this in this case we'll have a penalty. So if sense and we put them on sensor layer club, I'm going to change it to spade, just because that's my preference. It doesn't matter exactly actually which layer you choose. It's up to you, as long as they're the same. So I'm going to also put the bad guy on there. So now if I test, I should get a penalty once, once these guys get down to the bottom of the screen. And I'm not shooting, so I shouldn't hit them. And just to test this penalty, we'll see. Make sure that, whoops, Let's scoot over here. Now we get a penalty. Notice that the. Uh, the bad guy fell down below the game because we have the open, the open enclosure. So what we need to do is add a floor, finally, to this game. And now we have a floor, so that they don't fall. And they should, since there is a, a conveyor on there, they should be led towards the player if he happens to be over on this side of the screen. So now we have, a, we actually have a game where the, the uh, bad guys come down. We can score, and we can, uh, we can get a penalty if we miss them. We can add more challenge to the game by increasing the speed at which they're created. Now they're being created more quickly. We can even do that even faster. One thing you may want to do is put uh, your bad guys also on a pass-through layer so that when they touch each other, they don't fire any sensor events. So they can just pass right through each other without firing any uh, scoring or, or penalizing you. So now we have a pretty challenging game. We got new, new bad guys being created every second. And I've made enough of a score to win the game. And, and if you want to change the goals, you can change the uh, number of lives you have, the number of penalties you can get before you lose a life, and the top score you need to win, or a time limit. So you can really make a challenging, unique game. You can move the paths around. You can. Uh, uh, you can change the materials of the pads, you can change the size of the player, so the smaller he is, the harder he is to hit. You can make your projectiles slower, you could uh, adjust your 
sliding so that you, you uh, are slower just to make it more challenging or faster uh, to make it easier. All kinds of things you can do to make your game more interesting and more unique. Um, but that is the basics of it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.